Yo, what's up, snipers, and welcome back to our Minnesota Wild Gym mode. So, in last episode, we took on the Anaheim Ducks, and we actually managed to beat them. We were down 3-1 in the series, but we battled back with three great games, and we won in seven. And now we're up here in round two against the Chicago Blackhawks, who swept the first round, but they're missing a key piece to their team, who we picked up in free agency last year, and that is Andrew Erkramps. So their left side is a lot weaker Considering they don't have that left wing, uh, left wing 91 overall sniper now. So we also made one line change really, and that was putting Hawes down to the third line, just because he wasn't getting a dunner. He was a minus player, but he managed to pick up two goals on that third line. <clears throat> and then also we had an injury at the end of the se- or end of the last round, and that was an injury to Danny Morrison who went down with a uh, what was it a I think it was a broken leg or something, but it was till the end of the playoffs, so he's not going to return. Same with Davison, which means if we're going to have another forward injury, we're going to have to call somebody up. So, But anyways, our team played pretty good in the first round. Kaprizov is killing it even on that second line. So let's get into round number two. Chicago's pretty much, like I said, the same, except for they're missing Andrew Urkramps on that first line, so... Here we go, second round. Hopefully we could beat them considering they swept the first round. So, game one on home ice. First period, and it's a scoreless first period, but we're out shooting them. 11 to 5. Second period. There you go. one nothing. us. Tommy Kilger, who had to get moved up to the second line, I think. Um, he manages to come through with the game's first goal. We're out shooting them 20 to 11, and we're up one nothing. Let's just lock it down here in the third period. Power play, and they're going to score a shorthanded goal. God damn it, Hibbert. Shorthanded goal, damn. That's something you don't want to do in the playoffs. Come on, <laughs> long power play for them, but they don't score on it. And they're out shooting us almost now. Well, actually, they weren't. They were close to out shooting us. And we're going to go to overtime in game one. Shots are 30-23 to 23 in favor of us, but it's a 1-1 game. Both goalies have been playing good. Let's get it done here in overtime, guys. <clears throat> Five minutes into overtime power play. Let's end it now, boys. Let's end it now. We don't do it. Halfway through overtime, nobody has gotten a goal yet. We're getting the tons of chances, but we have yet to beat whoever's in net. Oh, it was Comrie. And there you go. Bear Schultz, who came through in Game 7 of the last series, comes through with the game-winning goal. The captain has given us a one nothing series lead. So, Kilger from Kaprizov and Schultz from Ruchin and Fitzgerald. Three stars in that game. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is getting dry. Corson eight with an 8 1 save percentage or an 0.81 goals against average, my bad. 965 save percentage and Bear Schultz, the third star. So at least we take game one. Hopefully we can continue this winning ways. We're on now a four-game a four game winning streak. Let's see if we can get 2-5 with a game, a win on home ice again. That was Chicago's first loss of the playoffs. Let's see if we can give them a second first period, and it's scoreless. Shots are 12-11. to This seems like a really defensive series for some reason. Second period, it is a 1-1 game. So again, Tommy Kilger picks up a goal, so I'm glad he's at least... Picking up goals, and Gurianov, who's on their first line, makes it a 1-1 game. We're out shooting them 27-20. to Let's get it done here in the third period. Boys, power play. We don't score. There you go. Bear Schultz again with maybe another game-winning goal. As it's 2-1 us here in the third period. Last 10 minutes now. Time winding down. Last 5 minutes. Come up it up. Keep it up. And we are going to take it to the one. So another great performance from Corson. Playing better than he did last round. And we have taken a 2-0 series lead. So Kilger from Kaprizov and Sure. Schultz from Ruchin and Albulin. So very good performance in net and defensively. Okay. So Corson might actually have a chance of winning a Vesna Or not a Vesna, A um, Conn Smythe if we have a chance to win a cup. But it's still a long time away. We still have another round to get through if we could get to that next round. So, game number three. Can we take a stranglehold on the series? We're back in Chicago at the United Center. 
Let's get it done, guys. First period and nicely done. Two one us after one. Baran scores, but then Ven <laughs> that last name Venkation makes it one one and has given us the lead. We're getting out shot, but we have the lead, which is nice. Second period and it is three three. So they get two unanswered goals. Clarence Evitt makes it a three to two game, but Kent Hodge is with his second in the playoffs. Wait. Wow, what the hell? One of their goals is that somebody scored from past the red line on our goaltender. Come on, Corson, you can't let one of those goals in. It was like, it's almost like a Lidstrom type of goal on Dan Kluche. But Kent Hodges with his second in the playoffs ties the game up at three. Let's get it done here in the third, guys. Maybe they're a good offensive team on home ice, but not really much on the road. There you go, Bear Schultz, another potential game winning goal. But Sumal ties it back up. Both teams playing great offensively in comparison to the first two games. Last five minutes of the third period. Are we going to go to another overtime? And we are going to OT. We're getting out shot 38-26, to but we're still in this game. Come on, guys. Let's get that OT winner and take a stranglehold on Chicago. Halfway through overtime power play, and we score. There you go. Larry Sure. Despite having 42 shots on goal, Chicago is going to lose. And we have a 3-0 series lead. And we might be heading to our first conference finals in quite a while, actually. So Larry Sure with the game winner. The alternate captain, I think he is on our team. So Baran from Malone and Hecht. Hecht actually picked up a point. That's good. Hodges from Hawes. Schultz from Erkramps and Fitzgerald. And Sure from Fitzgerald. Good job, boys. Three stars in that game, Ebbett, Sure, and Fitzgerald. So we have Chicago by the neck, and now we're just looking to throw them down and end this series. So will we sweep Chicago and move on to the conference finals for the first time in... What was the last time we made the conference finals? I think when we went to the Stanley Cup finals, so we haven't been there in quite a while. First period, nicely done, 2-2. Two -two. I'll take it. Kaprizov and Schultz make it 2-0, but an Ebbett and Hurdle answer right back. We're getting out shot 14-11, second period, and it is a 4-3 game for Chicago. Clarence Ebbett with a hat-trick in this game. Clarence Ebbett's getting a lot of their goals. Al Bowling, though, pulls us back within one, and we're only being outshot by two shots. Let's see if we can come back here in the third period. Nicely done. Buran ties the game up early. That's what I like to see. Early goal in the third period. Take the crowd out of it. And then we get the lead. And it's Granlund, the 37-year-old. Maybe will he have a game-winning goal to send us to the conference finals? Last five minutes. Time winding down power play. Last little bit. And your Minnesota Wild have just ended the Chicago Blackhawks in four games. And are headed to the conference finals for the first time in a long time. <clears throat> So Victor Schrader gets in, getting that empty netter. So everybody's coming through with goals in this playoff run. So Kaprizov from Erkramps and Albelin. Schultz from Sure and Fitzgerald. Albelin from Ruchin and Haas. Baran from Malone. Granlin from Ruchin and Haas. And Schrader from Haas and Albelin. So a lot of assists actually from Haas in that game. He gets the third star and Albelin gets the second. Ebby gets the first star with a hat trick. But we are moving on once again. And Mallory are on a seven-game winning streak. Nicely done. We are on the brink of elimination three times against the Ducks, but we managed to get on, and then we swept Chicago. So who are we up against in the conference finals? That is the question. Hopefully it's a team that is pretty easy, and it's not a team like the Jets who probably have a really good offense. I didn't see who was even in the playoffs other than us. Our HL team might have just been eliminated. Yeah, I think our HL team got eliminated. That sucks. Yep, they did. And we're up against the Edmonton Oilers, who won the Stanley Cup last year, and they are 8-1. and one. And their goaltender, Douglas, is a guy that wins Vezinas a lot. Damn, that is going to be a really tough round. But if we can get past them, we're on to the Stanley Cup Finals. So They didn't have the greatest regular season. However, their, their players are probably still really good. I don't even know what their lines look like. Let's take an updated look at their player stats for the first two rounds of the playoffs. So, Kaprizov, 12 points in 11 games. 
Uh, Sewer 11 points in 11 games. Fitzgerald 8 points. Albuin 8 points. Dumba 8 points. Uh, Urkram 7 points. Yeah, we're getting offense from every single player. Like our worst player that has played the most games is Chuck Knubel. Yeah, he's more of a defensive defenseman, not an offensive defenseman. But he has no points so far in the playoff run, but that's okay. And goaltending wise, Corson has turned it around. 917 save percentage, though. So, okay, that's that. Now let's take a look at what the Edmonton Oilers lines look like. I think Connor McDavid still is playing, so he should not have been retired yet. But their lineup is probably pretty scared, I'd assume. But hopefully we can get past them. This is our first time, like I said, in the conference finals since we went to the finals. <laughs> Holy shit. 98 Connor McDavid. Damn, that's the highest I've seen him. He's almost maxed out. He's 32 now as well with Jesse Paul Harvey, 92. Slebyshev, 82. Eggenberger, 84. Dreisaitl, 88. Yeah, that center core for the first two is really good. Nick Schmaltz, Damian Burgundy, Jermaine Rubstov, Jamie Benn. Wow, Jamie Benn's still playing at 39. Damn. How does he produce out of curiosity? 24 points in a regular season. Well, not too bad for a 39-year-old. And then Ryan Strom still there. Gordon Lankow. Huh? Okay. Pascal LaBerge. Defensively, Clefbaum and Brindamore. Larson and Darnell Nurse. Leggins. Spike Leggins. I think I remember that guy. And Damon Severson. And goaltending. There's the Douglas guy. Wait. He won a Vesna, but he's that bad? What the hell? Wow, like, look at his season stats, So for each year he's played. But he's, like, a really bad goaltender. That is really weird. Huh. And he's from Norway, too. And then Kyle Motzko is the backup. That's one of the guys I wanted to draft, but Edmonton stole him right before. Huh. And, let's see, we got... I Stanley and Delmore's the depth guys. Interesting. So overall wise, I'm definitely scared of McDavid, Paul Harvey, and Dreisaitl. But other than that, I'm not scared of these guys at all. And then defensively, and and it's not that bad. It's pretty much exactly like ours to an extent. So I think we should have a chance to be going on to that uh, Stanley Cup final. But we have to face a team that went eight and one in the first two rounds. So it's going to be a really tough battle. But anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.